example, and they're not playing until four o'clock. Yeah, and Wexford. But the big thing is, and, th yeah. there's a buzz about like when there's a big match in Torles, it takes over the town. That's the big thing about it. And I suppose, like the boys here that played in Torles, there's something about it. I know Crow Park is where the All Irons are, but to me. The real theatre sure. is here in Torres. Yeah. Does, does that feed? Does that atmosphere? And you're always expecting a good game. And as you say, downtown, they're all they're all around downtown, whether they're green or not. I expect around thirty thousand or having mm. breakfast down there. Like there's a great buzz about, it and the, the the weather's picking up. So like it's a showdown at the OK Corral. The winners today, it's great for the winners. But I'm telling you, Michael, two teams that lose today, it's going to be a long, long. I suppose nobody, very few people inside or outside Wexford uh, expected them to be in the top six. No, I suppose not. But sure. They, they, they gave a good performance the last day, you know, Claire. And, you know, I, I suppose coming into here today, we don't really know how good we are or how bad we are. You know, we, we gave a great performance against Cork. We, we were kind of da down a little bit earlier on near playing Dublin. So today is a big test for us. So we'll, we'll have to step up to the mark big time again here today against a good Waterford team, you know. For the players to be coming in off the back of that win against Cork, that rare win against Cork, that, that must be a huge boost. That's just massive, you know. The, the people in Wexford, you know, the, you can even see the crowd around today. It, it, there's a lot more here today than there was uh, two weeks ago against Cork. So there's a buzz around the place. And when Wexford get going like that, you know, I think we, we, we have a great chance coming up here, you know, and, and we're looking forward to it. Tony, you were a part of the 2011 team, a Waterford team that was bizarrely also beaten by 21 points by Tip in a Munster final, came back, beat Galway by 10 in the quarters. So you know how it's done. Yeah, well, thanks for reminding me of that, Claire. But, you know, really, um, there's two things can happen. You can either sink or swim in a situation like this, you know. And, um, you know, I think Waterford today, they just got to believe more in their, in their system and their structure than, than ever before, you know. And quite simply, when something happens, you like that uh, heavy defeat, uh, what you really need to do is go back to basics and I think Waterford really need to go back to basics today in, uh, in a sense that they need to really you know, go back to what they're good at, counter-attacking really quickly, moving the ball quick, mo using the ball smart and also you know, they need, definitely today they need to improve on their aerial ability which really cost them the last day. So your quick prediction Tony, what are you, how are you going um, Well I'm hoping, I, I think it was a blip uh, for Waterford and I'm expecting a big reaction from Waterford today and I'd call Waterford by four or five points. Rory? I suppose the heart says Watford or Wexford, but you know, I, I think the head, I think Watford, I think they're, 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 they've, they've great experience over the last few years and they're probably probably a little bit ahead of where we are, you know, so I'd be going for Watford, but, but the heart would say Wexford. Okay, well, Rory and Tony, thank you. Clean sheet this afternoon. He's still a very good goalkeeper. It's a very strong full back line with Shane Fives and Barry Coughlin joining All Star cornerback 2015 Noel Connors. Austin Gleeson from Mount Sinai and Waterford City is a dominant force in this team, with last year's Young Hurler of the Year, Ty de Burka at number five, and Philip Mahoney on the other wing. Four Mile Waters' Jamie Barron has established a very strong centre field partnership with Dara Fives, who will once again wear the number 18 jersey. The half forward line is a lethal cocktail of young and old, with 19 year old Shane Bennett at centre forward, surrounded by the Elder Lemons, 29 year old team captain Kevin Mourn, and 33 year old Michael Brickwatch. The inside line is the scoring line for the Dacia, as it, ex it is expected that Patrick Curran, Park Mahoney and Maurice Shannon will ask serious questions this afternoon of the Wexford defence. Mark Fanning from Glen Barntown has re-established himself as first choice goalkeeper for Wexford. He's a good shot stopper and a proven penalty taker, if anyone can see them. Matthew O'Hanlon captains the side and plays here at full back with Owen Moore and Liam Ryan, who replaces James Breen, who has been very ill this week. We wish him the best. Dermot O'Keefe will wear the number five jersey and joining him in the outer defensive line will be six foot five Paddy Foley at centre back with Anna Martin on the other wing. Jack O'Connor has a strong hurling DNA as he's the son of John and nephew of the great George O'Connor. He will start in centre field with former Wexford under 21 captain Owen Conroy. Lee Chin is a naturally talented player and is named at centre forward. His influence is huge on this Wexford team and today he'll be joined by Liam Oak McGovern and Harry Kehoe in the half forward line. The main man up front is full forward Conor McDonald, who scored 30 points in three championship matches. Paul Morris and David Dunn will operate right beside him in that inner line, at top of the right and top of the left. Well, of course, Waterford from Waterford, straight from the Wexford puck out. Going forward at pace and speed, of course, is Kevin Moore and laying it off. Our Shane Bennett giving a little bit of space. Chance here for Murray Shanahan, and that's over the bar. Good score. Open score for Waterford off the stick of Murray Shanahan. Yeah, just the start, they'll have been looking for fantastic run by Moore and, you know, kind of operating in midfield, Marty, and uh, burst through. I think Alan Kelly had pointed for the free, but he gave the advantage and uh, a tap over for Morris, really, from there. Tory Mahoney. 
from the middle of the field is going to raise a white flag. They're just finding it hard to get their rhythm going here. Referee has given a free, and it's going Waterford's way. Ball comes back out. Waterford chasing everything. Again, it's Jamie Barron. Hand passing it inside. Nice ball. Comes from his left half forward. Michael Brick Walsh, and that's sailing between the bus. Good play, Waterford, I must say. Yeah, fantastic score, Marty, you know, because it looked like the chance might be gone down the corner, but, you know, a fantastic bit of vision from Shane Bennett to pick out Jamie Barron. Way out the middle of the field, it's an unusual sort of a pass. Made a bit of ground, popped a brick, and, uh, you know, that's a great start for Waterford, really. They'll be, they'll be thrilled with the way they've settled back into it. Tuck out comes down towards Lee Chin. His performance is vital. He gets away for the very first time in this quarter final, and Wexford are up and running. It's taken just over five minutes, but he is an inspirational leader once he's on the ball. Yeah, and that, I think Liam Dunn will have given clear instructions to, to Mark Fanning to get as much ball down on top of him as they can. Like, I mean, he's really turned their season around. He missed the Dublin game, they, they looked rudderless, and, uh, you know, since he has come back, he has given massive leadership. Ball breaks inside for Morris Shanahan. It's still Morris. Great hook by Jack O'Connor. Mark Fanning has the situation under control, or at least should have. But the ball is bobbling around the place, goalkeeper under pressure. Ball goalkeeper is off his line, comes back outside, and it's another point for Waterford. Again off the stick of Michael Brickwatch. Yeah, again, a bit of uncertainty in the, in the Waterford pullback. For the opening few minutes. Ball comes down towards Patrick Curran. Turning this and sending it to the left and wide. Joe Hanlon, you know, getting a, a flick down here and there, and, uh, you know, um, Gleeson quick onto the break there, reads it well. Um, I don't know, do we see something off the ball there, Marty? I'm not too sure. We get a view. It seemed to be an off the ball incident, Anthony, involving Barry Coughlin, and I was just trying to keep an eye on it. The Mark Fanning. Again, it's aimed at Lee Chin. He's batted down for us, Jimmy Barron. And once again, it's Austin Gleeson going forward. It takes lovely stick work. Hits it with a short grip straight between the posts. No matter where you play Austin Gleeson, he is simply a class act and still under 21 this season. Yeah, that's an incredible score, Marty. As Mr. spoke about the, the innocence of youth, maybe, but it's, that's fantastic to watch, isn't it? Lee Chin is looking sharp, has to go back first, his right half back to him, but O'Keefe gets away from the first challenger, sends it back into that couple of players. Going back to gather it is Barry Coughlin. Ball is cleared down the middle. Austin Gleeson has the time to control it. Let's fly. The slipper is heading straight to the right of the post. Well, surely the better option would have been to tap this over the bar. But Stephen O'Keefe put up his hurley. Probably did, to be fair to Conor McDonald. But O'Keefe deflected it away. Yeah, Marty, I think it was more of a miss hit. You know, he, I think you know there was no intent in his run up, or there was no power in the shot. But credit Stephen O'Keefe, like uh, although he'll have a chance now from the 65, but it's a lot more difficult than the, where he was hitting from originally. And uh, we've got to really take care with those and make sure you get them when the chance presents itself. Free going to be taken by Conor McDonald. Still a Wexford under 21 player this year. Standing over this, he looks at the target and the umpire, Conor McDonald. His third free of the match. Lee Chin, the only score for Wexford so far. He lifts this neatly. Comes out towards David Dunn, who's playing deep inside his own half back line at the moment. Ball on for his Lee McGovern. McGovern flicking it back inside. Much better from Wexford. His, the return ball is for David Dunn. Can he score from a difficult enough angle? The umpire is going for his flag. That's moving. Normally, Park Man, he punishes these sort of chances. Boring Mahoney going for his third point of the match, and that's easily achieved. These 15 minutes on before halftime, absolutely massive for the course of the game. Great puck out again from Mark Fanning. Kevin Warren is winning an awful lot of ball, clean ball in the middle of the field. Gives it down long. As uh, Waterford going in search of more scores, and they're looking good here. Shane Bennett hitting a rasper, and that is over the bar. Good score by the centre half forward from Barry Sackett. Yeah, great play by the two younger lads, uh, Bennett and Curran, you know, they, and he certainly went for that, but just plays it over, and you can see it. It's Conor Gleeson, who's come on for Dara Fives. 
gets the ball out, waiting for it in the middle is Austin Gleeson, stepping past his own 65 metre line. Let's fly from the middle of the field, and that is again gone to the left and right. Back. There's Liam Ryan, but again Wexford have to work hard to get the ball outside their own half back line as Waterford are chasing everything. Coming forward here is Conor Gleeson. Laying it off quickly for Jamie Barron, the referee says it's a free for the cornerback. Yeah, that's good, water. yeah, it's a good win for him, Marty, as well, because you know, out in front of McGovern there, and uh, you know, he, he's only come on and he's he's won two good balls now, so you know, it'd be good for his confidence now after coming off the bench. Waterford goes short, the result is impressive. Straight between the post and over the bar, good work by Jamie Barrett. Donald. Going for a second point of the match. Away by Kai Dvorka. He's just outside the Wexford 65. He's stepping back. He's not looking too happy in the direction. Comes down this side. Shane Fives gets a touch first. Kevin Moore. Here comes Farag Mahoney. Uses the short grip. There was never any doubt he was going to be hooked. And that's one of the fine point, finest points of this first half. Four points for Proud Man. It's first from play. Yeah, again, more in the instigator, you know, really savaging into the break. And the hand pass and using the short grip to lay it off for Patrick Curran. From way out the field, easy ball for Mark Fanning. So ops to go long rather than short to seek and find the ball for goal. But Philip Manning going forward at pace as Gerard O'Keefe has to try and win it. Fails on this occasion, but he comes back to him, luckily enough. Then he, in turn, is hooked by Torek Mahoney. Bit of a scramble on the Waterford 65 metre line. Ball comes back out into Waterford half of the field. Easy ball for Matthew Hanlon, the Wexford captain. Sends it into the space, but it carries again a little bit too much strength. The enforcement's coming from the half back line. It's Austin Gleeson. Sends this ball in, but again the finish is such a disappointment. The way the wind is, it, it seems to be dragging the ball left from this side. Lee Chin knocks it down, but picked up by Jamie Barrett. He's already scored a point. He's going for a second. He steps away. The body language would suggest that he's well pleased. Good score. Yeah, great. Good score from Waterford's lead. Great score by Barron, and you know makes a bit of ground. But Donald is right. They're being eaten on the the long Wexford puckouts. Wexford can get no joy at all. It's Jeremy O'Keefe working the ball up for his midfield. Good work by Andrew Kenny. Feeds and finds Lee Chin. And that is sailing between the posts. Really good score for Wexford. It's Lee Chin's second point of the match. Yeah, Martin, for once, since Kevin Moran sat, uh, sat back in front of him, he got away from him, and uh, he's their go-to guy, and that's a great score, and they won they badly wanted at this stage. Ball breaks inside, uh, Potty Foley. Going back is Owen Moore. Waterford never ever giving up. This is Shane Bennett. Pulls the trigger and sends that over the crossbar. For Shane Bennett's second point of the match. Yeah, and they look threatening up there when they get it, Matthew. Bennett definitely has the pace on his man and uh, you know they, they're well on top in general play. They just as all activity going on inside the D. James McGrath, the linesman has running in to make sure it stops immediately. And I'm sure we'll inform the referee, Alan Kelly, of what was happening. Mar Shanahan is getting off the ground here. Yeah, they just got tangled up from... I was kind of keeping an eye on it, to be honest with you, Marty. Um, they, 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 I think um, Matt Shanahan knocked the ball away and, and Morris was close by and they bumped off each other and then they decided to go rugby tackling each other. Hamlet, captain, showing leadership. Gives the quick ball, and the ball is dropping in, and Ty De Burke is there once more. Good defending. Laying it back is Philip Manning. Gone to gather it is Conor Gleeson. Sending the ball straight down the middle. Kevin Morn gathers it at the second attempt. Morn goes for the score from way, way out the field. But again, the ball is to the right and wide. That's 13 lines. For Waterford in the first half, they do have wind advantage, and I know what they were trying to do to use it to its maximum. 
but some of the shooting was way, way too far out. Yeah, it's an incredible tally, Marty, uh, for, you know, 35 minutes hurling, you know, 12 points scored and 13 wides. It could be up on, you know, 18, 19 very easily if a small percentage even had gone over. So they'll be frustrated. I still think they'll be comfortable enough playing into the wind. But you never know in hurling, like, you know, a, a team can get a chance and, and uh, you see Wexford hitting the white Beauty and Cyril Farrell. We were going into this uh, day, Liam, talking about the fact that, you know, we needed a couple of good games, boost up the championship and so on. What we've seen so far, I'm afraid, hasn't kind of enlightened anything. Yeah, look, it's probably more about what, what hasn't been done in terms of the misses. Uh, yes. uh, I mean, like for Waterford, they, they played with the breeze. They got the start they wanted, six points to one up after 10 minutes. Everything looked to be going according to plan. But like to think that they've converted 12 of the 31 chances they've created in the first half. They should be completely out of sight in this game. Mm. And they've left Wexford in the game because there is a nice breeze in it. But at the same time, you know, apart from Lee Chin, He's probably the only person in, in, in the Wexford team that's really tried to grab the game by the scruff of the neck. So it, it, it's a big next 10, 15 minutes at the start of the second half, but you'd have to say disappointing in that first half with the level of fear that we've seen. And I think what would really worry Waterford fans at this stage, Earl, is that they did the same thing against Tipperary in the Munster final a couple of weeks ago. Now, Tip, obviously, a, a better side on the day, but nonetheless, they didn't take the opportunities in that first half. They didn't, Michael. I know, know Derek McGrath were very disappointed. But the thing is, they're still playing a lot better. They're, they're lord in the midfield, like, you know, and they're getting scores. While they've missed the turbo lot, they've got great scores from outside. They're playing the ball around short. That's their game, like, and then shoot from outside because there is actually no one in there. Now, when they go over, it looks perfect. When they go wide, like, it's, it's you know, you're, you're, you're pulling the hair on your head. You think? Yeah, no, but you can see it here. I mean, I mean, that Austin Deason should have banged that ball over the barrier. He had loads of space, loads of time. He actually went into traffic, carried the ball in, and then ended up striking the white. Now, look, Parik Mahoney, normally from play spots, he's very, very accurate. But again, today, you know, they haven't really had that normal level of accuracy, accuracy they've had. And a lot of them have gone wide on the same side. So, yeah, yeah. you know, really, they should be out of sight. I tell you, whatever team they play, uh, if they do get through, the day they hit them all over the bar, it's got to help the opposition <laughs> because, I mean, 31 scoring chances in the first half is unbelievable. But We've seen, Ger, what what Waterford did wrong there, the wise they've got. But you want to illustrate for us why they're doing this. Well, yeah, you see that you, Tony Brown before the game said they had dominated in, in the air. That's what they're doing. Now, look at Kevin Moran here. He gets the ball. And you say, God, what are you shooting from that distance from? But you can see why he's shooting from that distance. Because Absolutely. simply inside the 50-yard line, there is the Waterford player. They hit the ball, top. You know, and this is you know, the Achilles heel, heel of this system of play. Mm, you know, mm. for a time, they're playing one full forward the whole time. They have the wind, very like the Munster final, they're playing with one full forward. Uh, Paddy Foley standing outside him. So you, you have no target man, really, you know. So yeah. they need to get a goal threat. We have no goal threat at oh. either side, but a team that's as dominant as that, you know, but, but needs to be creating goal chances but, if they want to win something, yeah, you know. Do, do you, do you'll beat Wexford, but you yeah. won't win in all Ireland playing like that. But they are playing much better. They, oh, like, they're dominating they oh, dominate oh, midfield the and get out, they're getting no other chances, you know what I mean? No questions, Al, but you must be creating better goal chances than that. All right, we are headed for another break here on the programme. In Playing against the breeze in the second half, comes out first for Manny. Manny. Loading this one in, is it inside the post? The umpire is it once more. Ball into the middle, far as Austin Gleeson saw that the challenge was coming and let's fly again from 65 metres out, but the ball is to the right and, well, not quite, stays in. Now the umpire puts it on. Oh, great catch almost by Barry Cotton in the sense that it looked like they had it momentarily. Stephen O'Keefe tries to bat it out. Tied to work as there, Wexford put the pressure on. There's a scramble inside the large rectangle. The ball is still available, the referee is arriving. But it's Wexford that have it, there's a chance here for McDonald. He turns, shoots and hits it wide. But that was a close one. Justin Gleeson, All-Ireland minor medalist three years ago. Giving it short to his team captain, Kevin Moore. Coming in to challenge, it's Paul Morris. Good ball, out for Austin. Lovely stick work, it's Gleeson and it's over the bar. It's his second point in the match, and you're not going to get any better in the championship 2016 than that. Yeah, fantastic score, fantastic link up there between Moore and Gleeson. And I'd say, look at half time, Marty, there was a serious. And keep thought about coming off his line, now got retreated, picked up here by Noel Connors, flicks it forward into the middle as Waterford build from the back. Ball down the middle towards Morris Shanahan. Nice turn, getting away from Matthew Hanlon. Now Hanlon tries to put a hand in him. Still, nice stick work again by Morris Shanahan. He's heading towards the 20. Coming in from the other angle that he started off on. And that is a brilliant score. 
by Morris Shanahan. It's the second point of the match by Morris Shanahan. Yeah, and both struck from inside the 21. An amazing run from Morris there. You, you weren't too sure where he was going. That's the earlier uh, own more yellow card for the top across Austin Gleason. But Matt O'Hanlon's be by Paul Morris looking it forward, coming forward in case is Liam Ryan. And that ball is sneaking inside the post and over the bar. Good score for the cornerback who's replaced James Breen, who's been ill all week, but uh, certainly earning his spurs here, Liam Ryan, with a fine point. Yeah, and has been out for a long time with an injury, Marty, and a huge loss to Wexford. I mean, one of their stars of their three Leinster under-21s in a row. And uh... Pipes. Tristan turns and uh, sends it down the way, but Wexford regained the possession through Paddy Foley. Foley goes for distance, trying to knock it out. Well won by Conor McDonald. Gets a little bit of space for himself and sends this straight over the crossbar. Good play, Conor McDonald. Yeah, brilliant play by McDonald. Like that's some skill to be able to go down, up, flick that ball. He knew exactly what he was doing. Flicked it down to himself, reacted, and over the bar. And you know, just a bit of a buzz now on the ground and the Wexford crowd starting to lift up behind him and if they could tack on the next score or two you never know what would happen it's a light rain falling here now in Central Stadium as Austin Gleeson puts the ball in and gets the return heading towards the corner flag but he has the situation under control good ball into the middle towards Shane Bennett there's a little touch Matthew Hanlon is struggling to try and regain composure he's there battling hard with Morris Shanahan ball is scrambling who has it exactly it's all more that seems to have it and then 45 meter line every opportunity crucial to Wexford when you're trailing by 15 points to seven he concentrated fully in a mark and sends this in and in a mark and scores a point fine point as Wexford play with wind and rain now to their backs the remaining 17 minutes. Yeah, great score by Ian Martin, uh, just what they needed. And uh... Senior, back in 2014, when he was still a minor. He's uh, certainly one of the young, bright stars in the world of hurling. Conor McDonald, loading this one in, and the umpire is satisfied. It's over the bar. Good score from way, way out the field. Yeah, good. Line, but Wexford beginning to believe in themselves, I would suggest in this match. They're chasing everything. They realise with wind and rain advantage they can put pressure on the Munster finalists. Good work there by Shane Fox. Fully established as the first choice corner back. Where's Jamie Barr, who scored two points in this match. Ball into the space to Michael Brick Walsh. Coming across his body falling. Big man from Crossed Bank Ballymore. Very near Wexford Town. In fact, very near Ferry Carrick. Ball into the space. Ball chasing. After this is Paul Morris. Breaking ball is crucial here. And again, Waterford anticipate. Floyd Mahoney, back first tied to Burka. Burka sends it down the wing, but the ball has gone out over the sideline. Sideline ball thrown in. Paul Morris gathering in Noel Connor, who manages to get it first. Philip Mahoney. Mahoney sends it down. Towards Brian O'Hara. Simon Dunahan with it. Ball in the, uh, on the hurl of O'Hara, and away he goes. Under the conditions, very skillful. Needs a little bit of support. He turns into the inside track and he sends it between the posts. Very, very impressive play by Brian O'Halloran. Yeah, and in the context of the way this game has been going, that's a fantastic score by Brian O'Halloran. Uh, really, you know, put on the, the afterburners there. And just... Shane Bennett replaced by his brother Stephen. As Mahoney takes the fray and it's gone just inside the post and over the bar. Good score. Difficult angle, just squeezed it in, enough. And that's a free end for Waterford, but oh, what a scintillating run by the young man from Mount Sinai in Waterford City. Absolutely brilliant party that has the stadium on its feet here in Torles. Uh, eventually had to be dragged down by Ian Martin because he was bearing down a goal at that stage, but what distance he made, I mean, he received a hand pass from his name, say, Conor Gleeson back inside around the 21-yard line. Austin Gleeson getting some attention as we watch Parag Mahoney take the free. Going for a seventh point of the match, and that's over the bar. But just when Waterford needed a bit of guts, a bit of courage, a bit of leadership, it was Austin Gleeson that came forward. The score, I think, was the absolute massive score of the game, followed by Gleeson's run. And Brian Holland, another great chance here.
There's a chance of another white flag to be raised, but the ball is white. We wish him a speedy recovery. Cut in by Jamie Barrett. Comes for his kick, Dylan. He's in front of the stand, he's looking at the goalposts and he's splitting him with the slipper. Great play, Jake Dillon. Really sending out a signal to his manager, Derek McGrath, that in the All-Ireland semi-final, he wants to start. Absolutely great score off his left, Marty. You know, took a few steps to settle himself and uh, good, very good finish right in front of his management, as you said, and giving out the message that in two weeks' time, when they take on Kilkenny, it looks like now for certain that he wants to be out there. Corey Bahani laying it off. And once again, it's Brian O'Halloran, who's also anxious to impress his manager as that ball hits off the post and goes over the crossbar. It's the second point of the match since being introduced, and the momentum has swung back in Waterford's favour. It has, Marty, and it's, it's game set and match now, I think, all right, but... Uh... No, there was there was a brief window for Wexford there if, if a goal had come, but uh, the big guns for for uh, Waterford have stood up again and was none more so than Moore there again a massive catch when they really wanted him to. Philip Mahoney sending it down the uh, sideline or far side. Matthew Bohannon is there giving it back. There's uh, Andrew Kenny gathered here on this occasion by Jamie Barrett. And Waterford certainly have for now and have a real cut off Kilkenny in the semi final. Chance here for Wexford, stopped, and the goalkeeper had already committed himself, bursting forward. But uh, Waterford are there in loads of numbers, including Shane Fives, and that's gonna seven points to his credit. Double scores, he increases that, does he? Yes, he does. Now to a massive ovation from the Waterford fans, and I mean, again, himself and like. Five marquee players, Matthew, were taken off in that monster final. They just malfunctioned on the day, their whole system, but the brick and mourn, like true men, like really came out and answered the call today for their for their squad and for their management and for their teammates and uh, a massive servant to walk with Hurling. Ball is sent in and sent over the bar. Reduce it down to a 10-point uh, game yet again. Final tally in stats was 19 wides. But they did score 21 times, and uh, indeed, as Liam and Ger were saying to Michael, indeed, Anthony has said in commentary, but once they get their radar working properly, if it all comes together, then it will be uh, a pretty impressive performance. Let's go down to the sideline and join Claire McNamara. Yes, thanks, Marty. We're here with Michael uh, Brick Walsh. Uh, congratulations. You're back in business. Yeah, great win here. It's all about getting, the, getting out here with a win and moving on to the semi final. Uh, Wicksford were going to be a massive test, especially with what happened two weeks ago. And uh, look, it wasn't pretty, but we got to win. How much of a relief was it, given what happened in the Munster final, to just get back out there and, and get back to win? Uh, it was going to be a tough, tough one. Uh, it's tough two weeks, I suppose. And uh, you know, I suppose you see it in the football qualifiers. It's very hard to turn it around after after losing a, a provincial final. And you know, great credit to Derek and the, the lads over. The guys turned around, and we obviously won here today. Was there some anxiety there in the second half when Wexford came at you and reduced the, the gap to five? No, look, uh, at the end of the day, there's always going to be uh, ups and downs in, in games, and Wexford had a bit of a purple patch there, and I suppose we, we dug it out and uh, were comfortable enough in the end, um, in fairness. It was comfortable enough, and, and your reward is a semi-final against Kilkenny. Yeah, uh, we are under no illusions, uh, I suppose. Uh, Chip and Kilkenny have proven to be the top two teams uh, over the last number of years and we've we've got well beaten by by one and obviously Kilkenny are at the top over the last number of years so we're up against a huge test here with no qualms about that. Well, congratulations today Michael. Thanks a minute Claire. Well I think Michael Walsh as a as a Kilkenny tip one so they'll they'll fancy upsetting the, the apple carton in that in that semi-final. Big news is the Waterford are through to the All-Ireland semi-final. The full-time score here in Semple Stadium, Thurless, Waterford 21 points, Wexford 11. We ran out of body, bodies and ran out of legs, but look, at, I can't fault the lads for the effort. You know, Waterford got to start um, at the game and sure, we could never pull it back. I think we got back to five points there in the second half, in fairness to our guys, but Waterford pushed on again. So look, at fair play to Derrick and, and Waterford. We're delighted to be in a second, as I said, a consecutive semi-final for the first time since 2010 to 11, and it's uh, it's great for the lads to be able to. Obviously, they were very smarting from the how we played two weeks ago, and everyone was hurt, managing for hurt. You know, it's not a case of just packing our bags when you go home from training. There was a lot of hurt there, and a lot of anger how we had played, and you know, to take that baggage with you and to be able to perform in the manner they did, it's very, very proud of them. You know, yeah, it was a good good comeback given given as he spoke there their pain.